VS Code is striking back, finally catching up with Cursor. But what I'm more excited for is the unveiling of Project Padawan, expected this year. It's going to be your fully automated Jedi colleague, maybe giving Microsoft the high ground. This might finally answer where VS Code has been this whole time. They just let these young graduates come in, fork the code, and made a billion dollar business. Are they finally fighting back? Well, after you subscribe, we'll find out. Let's start out with agent mode. You're probably familiar with this idea by now from tools like Cursor and Windsurf. In the chat box over here, we need to make sure that we're in the new edit mode. I'll take a look at that in a bit. But then down in this drop down, we need to change this into agent. And you can see we also have a choice of models down here as well, where we can use Claude or Gemini 2 Flash as I'm actually on the free tier of GitHub Copilot, which is actually very generous, by the way. I'm going to go ahead and use the new Gemini 2 Flash model that came out recently. Let's see how well that does. And let's go ahead and give this a prompt. Now, I've given it a simple prompt to create me a Hacker News clone using Next.js. I have said mock the data for now, as I'll attach the backend later. I just want to see the user experience of the agent mode. The code itself is going to depend on the models that you pick, and you can use these models in all of the other tools. What I am going to do, though, is attach a screenshot of the Hacker News website, as it should be able to use this image as context. Now, we are seeing an error. Okay, apparently Gemini 2 Flash doesn't support images yet. I imagine that's just because it's in preview as Gemini actually has good vision capabilities. Let's see if the same thing occurs for Claude here, which is also preview. Yep. Does the same thing occur for 4.0? No. Okay, so we can go ahead and use a screenshot with that. So let's hit enter here and see how the agent mode behaves. So it's using that one as reference there, the screenshot. It needs to run a command in the terminal to actually create the Next.js application. And you can see it pops it out down here, similar to how Cursor would. Let's go ahead and spam enter through that setup there and install the dependencies. And once that's done, it's picked up that the command has finished over here. So it said ran the command in terminal and it should go ahead and change my pages now. So if I go into the app router and page.tsx, you can see that it's generating the edits in here and it's streaming that in as it goes, which is nice to see. And once that's finished, we get this nice diff view now, similar to something that you would have seen in Windsurf and Cursor. And we can go ahead and see the changes that it's made and click accept and discard if we like them. I'm going to click on accept all down here. And then it also wants me to run command in background terminal to actually start up the server. So let's go ahead and hit continue here. And once that's done, it actually has an error in the terminal. So the error here is that it's in the copilot folder, which is the parent folder. It's not in the hacker news clone folder. But what's a bit disappointing is it hasn't picked this up as context. In cursor, it would actually go ahead and read this output of the terminal here, and then it would put it back into the agent mode, which would detect why the error has occurred. And it would probably change the command to CD hacker news clone and an NPM run dev. That's definitely something they need to work on. Let me just quickly see if it can pick up the terminal by saying there was an error in the terminal and see if it can go ahead and correct itself based on that. Okay, it just said there's no errors in the page.tsx file. It's not picking up the terminal, bit disappointing. What's even more disappointing is the site that I got out. You saw me give it the screenshot of the Hacker News website, so I have no idea where it's picked up this color scheme from. I guess it's kind of roughly got the post layout here, but overall it has not picked up that I wanted it to look like that screenshot. I'm going to put this down to the fact that I was using GPT-4.0, maybe Claude Sonnet, and that lot would have been a lot better because they're generally better at coding. But it's also worth noting that agent mode is experimental at the moment, so I imagine this will get better and better by the time that it actually releases. The other thing that's new though is this edits mode in general. This is actually now generally available, so you can get this in VS Code now. As you can see, it's Copilot edits, and all I need to do is just change this back to the edit mode, similar to how you would in Composer in Cursor. You can see we're in edit mode here. I'm gonna change this to Claude 3.5 Sonnet. Let's go ahead and see if this can create a Hacker News clone without an image. To do that though, I'm actually gonna go ahead and use this voice chat feature. So I'll start a voice chat. Create me a Hacker News clone using the same orange color scheme and simplified post layout. There we go, it's picked up that I finished talking there. I'll help you modify the existing page to match Hacker News signature orange theme and layout. Const mock data equal. There you go, I wasn't actually expecting it to talk back to me. I didn't know it did that, but that was quite cool to find out. It was reading all of this out, and then I think it tried to read out some code as well. So that would really slow you down if you actually use that. I guess that's some people's preference. Personally, I just stick to the chat mode, but I guess that's quite cool. And you can actually see that it might be down to the fact that I used Claude here. The Hacker News clone is way better. This looks way more like Hacker News than the previous one, even when I gave it a screenshot. Now I went ahead and asked it to add in the menu bar, just so that I can show you that it also has this diff view when you use the edits mode. It's also worth noting that you can undo and redo the last edit. I would prefer the sort of cursor method where you can scroll up, see the code, and then actually hit reapply, and it will try to reintegrate it into the changed code. And you can also scroll back to a specific snapshot. With this, it looks like I would have to click undo last edit a few times to get back to the one that I wanted if I'd made a few changes. 
So VS Code is definitely trying to catch up, but it still has a few bugs and missing features. But let me show you an area where they might surpass Cursor. That's with Project Padawan. This will allow you to directly assign issues to GitHub Copilot. Then Copilot automatically spins up a secure cloud sandbox and gets to work. It will produce a fully tested pull request, even taking into account any discussion that you might have in the issue or PR and any custom instructions you have within your repository. Once it's finished, it will then assign a human reviewer to the PR and it will work to resolve any feedback that you might add. So it's a bit similar to what we saw with Devin, where you get a fully automated AI employee that hopefully doesn't replace you, but helps you out. So let me know in the comments if this scares you or if you're excited by AI being able to take away the mundane and let you work on the bigger problems. While you're down there, subscribe and as always, see you in the next one.